What's up everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex and in this video I want to review Marvel Spider-Man 2. I beat the game last night. I'm going for the 100% and the Platinum today. I feel like I can get there very very quickly. Before I go too far in though I do want to just say that they did provide me a code Insomniac slash PlayStation uh, for the game. I got it a day early just to throw that out there. That doesn't change anything about what I'm going to say. I got some very high positives, a few negatives about this game, but let's start with my overall feelings. I loved it. I really did love this game. It's one of my favorite games of the year. I don't know if I'd say it's my favorite game, that my game of the year. It's probably my top three, I gotta be honest, and, and maybe we'll do a ranking video, you know, towards the end of the year. But I think this game is super super good. It truly is what I said in my impressions video now that I've completed it. It's really just better in every way than Marvel Spider-Man 2018. Now, you can argue how big of a jump it is, and I, I think that's reasonable. I think that's fine. But honestly, for me, everything that you do is just better. So I really liked Marvel Spider-Man 2018. And one of the things I said, uh, the only weaknesses, a couple of the weaknesses, you know, crimes. Crimes, I think, have been cleaned up pretty well. Not perfectly, but crimes are shorter than they were in the first game. I, I feel like the rewards for doing them are better. There's less uh, quick time, which I like quick time events actually overall, but they're just more fun to do. As one example, the side missions. The side missions are very, very deep detailed um there's actually some pretty emotional you know you maybe have seen like the clip of like sitting on the bench with the old man and kind of just talking they're super good like they're incredibly good and honestly i feel like they give across the idea that this is your friendly neighborhood spider-man a thing that you kind of get in the first game but i think these side missions really push home in this game peter and miles are out to help and obviously Peter goes through some stuff but they're out to help and even something as simple as some of the the crimes you may have to pick up a person and bring them to an ambulance now that's very much like the uh, movie tie-in right Spider-Man 2 it actually feels like this entire game kind of feels like that era where it's it's a bigger step forward than obviously the first game was but it's a bigger push to make it more believable that these are again like friendly neighborhood Spider-Man but the side missions again as I said I think they're very very detailed so much better than the first game the crimes have been cleaned up suits I think have taken a step back visuals have taken obviously a gigantic step forward with ray tracing and just how freaking beautiful this game looks every single second also the fact that it really does feel like New York and the different you know districts and areas of New York one thing I've talked about I think I mentioned it in the impressions video or maybe I mentioned on Twitter once you turn down that web assist swinging, you have to do it. You really have to do it, even just to see if you don't like it, because I feel like it massively transforms how you get from point A to point B. I've actually been playing it for the majority of the game on a 7 out of 10. It starts you at a 10. I put it to a 7. I want to go lower. I probably will just for fun, just to kind of test it. But I think somewhere in like the 4 to 7 range is pretty darn good and lets you experiment. It lets you fail. It lets you say, okay, well, you're not swinging perfectly perfectly right there or transferring into like the web wings like you got to do it this way it makes you think it makes you think a little bit but you know taking a few steps back as your web swinging it's like it's incredible it's absolutely freaking incredible how good it looks how well it runs um, I know the the bugs and the issues is kind of like a 50 50 like a coin flip some people I think are going out of their way to create bugs in spider-man which is like disingenuous but there are bugs there are issues uh, for me personally I experienced very very little there was one time where you know when the game like freezes and tells you okay do this new ability you just got it wouldn't let me do it I think it was L1X and I went to press it and it literally just wouldn't work so I had to restart checkpoint there was a few times where like fighting bosses the boss fights I think are really really good in this game but there are some times where the game like the camera can't really focus uh, whether it's too many enemies that happened a few times as well towards the end of the game when there's just a lot of enemies you know happening at the same time attacking at the same time sometimes the game gets confused Confused, and you can get your Spider-Man in an unfortunate area where the camera kind of has trouble tracking you or you can again get a boss fight kind of in a corner of an area where the camera has trouble those were my issues um, but in terms of like hard crashing or like insanely crazy things happening zero that doesn't mean they don't happen and that's a stupid thing that happens with the internet right it's either nothing happens or everything happens uh, in terms of bugs no I mean obviously each person's going to experience something slightly different but they didn't 
didn't impact my enjoyment whatsoever on this game. The game is also just fun. You know, the combat, it relies on the combat a lot. A lot of this game is getting from point A to point B, doing the combat, and then the story, right? What they're doing with the characters, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But the combat, I think, is awesome in this game. It's everything the first game was, and then I think it was built upon in a really good way. The gadgets work so well with the combat. Now, there's less gadgets than there were in the first game, but I think they're more impactful, and I think they're just better overall. And then you got your, your tech or your abilities, which I think are also really, really cool, and they make you think they make you strategize to kind of swap some in and out they make you maybe say okay well i'm going to save this ability for when that this enemy comes or i'm going to use it all in a boss honestly in some ways especially with the parry it felt very much like god of war ragnarok and i don't think that's all that surprising i think sony games much like a lot of the industry right they'll copy or they'll take things from each other especially if they're like in a network right so like wb might steal from each other sony xbox and that's what i think you're getting here is a lot of that also like the cooperative things not just playing with my i won't spoil who else can join you in fights but several other people join you in fights and i feel like that's hearkening back to other sony games but i think they nailed it i think the game is really really fun to play it was ex it's exciting i guess every time you use the abilities as either of them i think they're both really really fun miles definitely starts more powerful but let me tell you by the end of the game it's peter all the way at least for me um but both of them are really really fun and then there's the characters in the story i i think they nailed it i really do i think this is a better story i'm going to say it it's a better story than the first game I said before, the first game I feel like was pretty disjointed and jumped around too much. Now, this game does as well. Like, it throws something at you to then lead you to something else. And the villain in the beginning is not the villain at the end. Like, it's it, very similar, I guess, in a sense to Spider-Man. I just feel like it does it better. I feel like Kraven is a really cool villain. He gets his time to shine. He also doesn't <laughs> at times. But I think they made him very intimidating. I think his backstory is really good. I think you got to do everything, honestly to get the most out of this game you got to do all of the stuff with with yuri slash the wraith right you got to do that stuff because there's some really and that's that's what i was mentioning with the side missions everything is fleshed out the side missions are so much more fleshed out they're very cinematic they may lead to future stuff in fact without giving it away i think the ending of of wraith's little story her side thing i personally believe that's going to be the dlc slash expansion thing that could come next year i'll make a video specifically on that but that's a that's a low-key prediction right now and that's just what you get all of these things lead to something very very cool some characters kind of get shafted black cat gets sh like i don't know why like she's in it and i think she's pretty cool and then she's not in it and it's like okay she was just kind of like a, a glorified cameo in some sense so again they don't do it perfectly but they do it I would say much better than the first game and just really well overall the characters are awesome I think MJ is awesome I will give this away so moderate spoilers you play as her again and I think they're actually really good segments they're kind of different especially towards the end of the game they make her pretty uh, powerful let's just say that but she's really cool uh, well number one I think Laura Bailey just does a really good job as her and I think she's a good character I think she works extremely well off of Peter slash Yuri right but I think her segments of gameplay are actually really really good I never hated her gameplay segments in the first game but compared to the first game Jesus it's not even close it's so much better in this one and I just think the story has more weight it's kind of predictable in this one in terms of where it's going and and who's gonna be Venom let's say I won't spoil that but like I did see it coming from miles and miles away but honestly the game did everything it needed to do it had emotion multiple times it had these kind of redemption arc stories that I think were really really cool it had spider they had both the spider man being spider man helping each other out trying to like solve issues with themselves going through certain things and obviously they do it differently i do think peter's story was way more evolved than miles miles was primarily used as the help miles would help everybody else and you know he did have to resolve some things you know in his own life or on his own and he did 
but he was mainly used to help other people, whereas, you know, Peter and his story with Harry and, and obviously Venom and Craven, that kind of drove the overall, which I didn't actually mind. I'm just throwing it out there that, you know, obviously they've said it's more of like a 50-50 game. I don't think that was – like, Miles is extremely important. But in terms of who's driving the – well, I guess maybe he does drive the story because he fixes a lot of the issues. But um, I actually felt that Peter kind of drove the story and what was happening specifically to him. But the ending I thought was incredible. There's some really big cinematic moments in this game from – again, like, side stuff. Side stuff has cinematic moments. The main stuff, every story mission felt – big felt very very big in a bigger way than the first game you know I saw some people saying like well the first game had whatever it was like 42 or 45 uh, missions actual missions having replayed it and, and and you know if you haven't replayed in a little while and you're thinking like that please replay it because if you replay it the some of the some of those missions are like 20 seconds. Some of those missions are going to a location, watching a cutscene, and then the mission's over and it goes to the next mission. So using that to say, well, the this main story's shorter this time. I guess, <laughs> but at the same time, I think it's more powerful. Yes, there's less story missions, but each one there's a couple. There are a couple where I think there was one in particular, it was just a cutscene between like Harry, MJ, and Peter. And that was kinda and it was like a three, four minute thing. But in the first game, I felt like that happened like ten to fifteen times. Second game it happens maybe like a less than a handful. So it's you know, it's just different. It's not that way. Uh, I honestly felt everything was very impactful. And then the end credits, the second end credits, uh, they do some pretty cool stuff. So we're going to talk about the spoilers of all of this stuff in future videos over this week. Just kind of wanted to give you guys my you know overall impressions. But yeah, I I really liked it. You know, I, I don't want to like second guess myself. I think it's okay, I guess, to like look at it, you know, very critically different parts to it. I think this was kind of what I wanted. Like, this is everything that the first game did. They didn't reinvent the wheel in any massive way, but it's everything the first game did in every single element, except for maybe suits, and then they improved upon it. Like, I just think it's better. Everything is better. The world looks better. The world feels better. The web swinging feels better. Like, movement, combat, I think overall is better. The story, I think, is better. The characters, I think, are better. Kind of staying on a specific path. The side stuff, crime, side missions, even collectibles. Collectibles, there's just not as many of them. And I, like, I don't understand why that would be a negative. I've talked about it. You don't need 500 now there are actually I think maybe even still too many of them but I don't think you need 500 collectibles in any game I think that's just there to pad time so yes is this a game that's shorter than the first game to say 100% or even just to beat the story yes it is is that a bad thing no because I think it has more quality than the first game the first game I really love this game I love even more and I really, you know, again, I'm not going to second guess myself. I really like this game. I've seen online where people are saying it's a disappointment. And, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. That's to You respect my opinion. I'll respect yours. I got what I wanted. I think this is a true sequel. Yes, it doesn't reinvent the wheel, but these are kind of these steps forward that a lot of other games have done from one to two. And I think really, honestly, the length of it is just what's kind of getting people. Maybe like the safety of it. I saw a lot of people talking about how safe of a sequel it is. I didn't really think it was all that. Like, yes, it's, it's predictable, but there's a couple really big things that happen <laughs> that I was like, oh, that's that's actually really, really cool. I didn't see that coming at all. And I'm not a massive comics fan, so maybe, you know, I'm not the best person to ask, but I didn't really feel like it was all that safe. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to uh, go attacking or, you know, kind of analyzing other people's opinions online. My opinion is this is one of my favorite games, probably top three game of the year. Could be my game of the year. I got to let it sit and rest a little bit and Alan Wake still has to come out. So there's room for movement on my list, but I really loved it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If there's anything I didn't say that you want to ask me, you know, ask in the comments. I'll try to respond to them uh, as we go forward. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you all on the next one.